It's been a year since the death of Dr. Amit Sen Gupta, a founding member of the Jan Swastya Abhiyan and Global People's Health Movement. On this occasion, we remember his commitment to justice and health for all and his unwavering championship of scientific temper and reason. It's difficult for us to think that Amit left us one year back, but this is really one year since when we lost him. We had this thought that we will do certain set of activities in his memory. And we start this today with a discussion about, small discussion about his role in the people science movement. Because apart from the people's health movement of which he was one of the founders. He was also one of the key figures in the people's science movement. He was one of the key figures in the people's science movement. He was one of the key figures in the people's science movement. He was one of the key figures in the people's science movement. He was one of the key figures in the people's science movement. He was one of the key figures in the people's और मैंने ऐसा कोई जगह नहीं देखा या कि कोई राज्य या जिला कहीं उनको याद नहीं कर रहे हैं विज्ञान को समाज का जोड़ने की जो बात हम कर रहे हैं उसको अमित जी उसको केवल एक सिद्धांत के साथ नहीं देखते थे वो ये देखते थे कि विज्ञान को समाज का जोड़ना मतलब कैसे मूल्यों का नीचे जाना और व्यवहारिकता में कैसा ना केवल विज्ञान को लोकप्रिय करने की बात नहीं थी उसके मूल्यों की बात और वो मूल्य की बात जो कहे वो केवल संगठन के अंदर नहीं था बल्कि इनकी व्यक्तिगत जीवन में भी था आज के समय जो चुनौती है विचारधारा को हम बहुत कहते हैं वह विचारधारा को जीना ही एक बहुत कठिन बात है तो मैं समझ पाए कि इस व्यक्ति को क्यों लोग याद करते हैं इसीलिए वो व्यक्ति जो सिद्धांत की बात हम कहते हैं जिस मूल्यों की बात हम कह रहे थे पीपल साइंस मूवमेंट है उस व्यक्ति ने उसको अपनी लोगों के साथ जिया इसलिए आप चाहे झाबुआ में जाइए चाहे आप अपने बस्तर से आई हो बस्तर में जाइए कहीं भी जाइए लोग उनको उसी तरीके से याद करते थे अमित वॉज अनयूजल नॉट सिंपली इन दर्सनैलिटी ट्रेट्स दैट वी ऑल समटाइम्स गॉट एफेक्शनेटली एक्सपरेटेड विथ एंड मोस्टली वेर एंड वेस ऑफ दैट आर शर डिस्क्राइब he came with an integrating point of view that very few of us could put together that very few people in the field could put together to put together a point of view about biologic drugs that said something about their growing impact in the future the empirical evidence about their side effects which would have consequences for regulatory action and improvement their uncertainty of intellectual property uh, rights and therefore the opening that it that provided us for um, a people's activism intervention and to understand all of this from both a biomedical standpoint a um, regulatory activist standpoint and a drug marketplace standpoint and to pull it all together and say here is a new pressure point that needs to be put together in this landscape by activist movements this is what the man was remarkably so when the uh, indus civilization is discovered everyone wants to know how does this narrative of india's origins which has been read off from the rigveda fit in with the material of the indus civilization all right uh, and this is a debate that continues to um, that uh, is you know still ignited repeatedly in the public domain because there are these forced correlations that are repeatedly made between the indus civilization and the rigveda so it's important to spell out why the two don't overlap right so when you look at the rigveda you see that it is this non urban uh, pastoral society with cattle cattle keeping as its central concern the indus civilization on the other hand we know was a widespread urban civilization it new cities writing external trade and the state right 
Uh, the other thing is everyone who's done middle school science, uh, social science knows that, you know, the Harappans had this widespread trading network. So you would expect if there is some correlation to be made between what is contained in the Rig Veda and the Indus civilization, that the Rig Veda would at the very basic, you know, uh, level at least refer to areas that are part of this trading network. So, you know, Sindh, Gujarat, Oman, the Persian Gulf, Mesopotamia, uh, none of this finds reference in the uh, Rig Veda. All right. In the Rig Veda, the rhinoceros and elephant are unfamiliar animals. But if you look at the seals that I've put up over here, you can see that the Harappan um, people were well acquainted with these two animals. An animal which keeps on appearing in uh, the Rigvedic material is the horse. And at best, the presence of the horse in uh, the Indus civilization is contested. So we have to look at what happened around 100 CE uh, as a political development which happened and not uh, as a result, neither is divined, divinely ordained nor genetically ordained. And that is also significant. It has the caste system, therefore there seems seems to suggest that it has no, it wouldn't have had any rationality to exist in any way, but uh, it doesn't have any rationality to exist even by scientific uh, new findings that have arrived. So in any of these ways that you look at, the, the new findings are significantly a step forward in terms of we understanding ourselves. So where, so why is there an opposition at all? Because if there would be, because it suggests, new findings also suggest that the Arya Sanskrit Vedic uh, culture uh, is not the, necessarily the foundational source of Indian civilization, mm -hmm. but that it is an important source of Indian civilization. If you have to see the foundational source of Indian civilization, you have to go back to the higher Indian civilization. Now, if any ideology that, bases, that is based on the assumption that Indian civilization draws its sustenance, foundation, everything from Arya Vedic Sanskrit culture will have a problem with the findings. And uh, that's, where the, uh, that's where the problems are. But that's, we have to go by what the facts say and not by what uh, we would like to see. And if you take the findings in their overall uh, picture, it's a, it's a highly exhilarating thing to find. We have created a common civilization out of four different uh, strands of uh, migrations into this land over thousands of, uh, uh, thousands of years. And, uh, and, and it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a great thing. And as my book says, we are all Indians, we are all migrants, and we are all mixed.